Out of all the seasons of the year, summer is by far the one that I embrace the least. It's hot, it's humid, there's very little color contrast anywhere, everything is just green. The sun rises insanely too early, and the atmosphere is always hazy and dull, and it kind of creates that flat, non or low contrasty look. And that ultimately leads me to shooting in the fall, the winter, the spring, and then just skipping the summer altogether, waiting for the fall to roll back around again. And that's the topic of this week's video, so discuss five real quick tips or ideas to help you out with your summer landscape photography. I know these ideas definitely helped me on my most recent trip to Yosemite. I'm hoping they'll help you out as well. So to jump right into it, the first idea or tip has to do with looking for interesting light. And coming to a woodland area is absolutely fantastic for that. It's about maybe three and a half hours past sunrise, so the sun's very high in the sky, but as it comes through the canopy of trees above and the leaves, it creates interesting light all across the foreground, all the ferns, and usually whenever you find interesting light, there's also gonna be interesting shadows. And a lot of times that will take the viewer's attention off of the fact that everything in your scene is just lush green and just kind of makes your image that much more appealing and that much more interesting and it'll make people wanna look at it a little bit more. So I'm gonna take a few more images here, head back to the office and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. So a couple weeks before I went to Yosemite, I was at that same woodland area looking for interesting light and how it kind of cast um, light and shadows on that fern area and I got some great examples right here and without the light if you take this light away this image is completely boring but when I look at it my eye immediately is gravitated to all the areas where the light is uh, hitting the ferns and it just contrasts very well against the area of shadow and it just makes for a much more interesting photograph as opposed to there just being all light because this image was captured in the midday sun and without the dappled light, this image would, it, it just wouldn't work. It would fall completely short. Here's another example of just a much more intimate, uh, detailed version of the light hitting the ferns. But once again, without the interesting light, this image would be, uh, would be nothing. And a lot of times, you might not be near a woodland area to do this. You can also do it, and one of the great things about summertime is usually the warmer weather will create afternoon clouds and you can use clouds to create interesting light as well. If you just time it to where clouds are either moving in front of the sun or moving away from the sun, that'll also create an interesting lighting effect. Here's one from uh, Yosemite where the clouds were just moving away from the sun and the sun just peeked out just temporarily, just enough to light up this cliff face and show off all of the uh, the trees growing out of the rock area right here. It just made for a, a very interesting photograph. And once again, you remove the light from this image, it's just a, a very flat, boring image. Now, the second tip has to do with shooting silhouettes or focusing on silhouettes. I never shoot silhouettes in, in the fall or winter or springtime, but for some reason in the summertime is when I start to focus on that. I feel like I need to be, I guess, a little bit more creative in the summertime, so I, I kind of pay more attention to it. But there are a lot of fun to do. It's super simple to do. Here's one. I was in Santa Barbara. California before I went to Yosemite. And this is right out of the hotel room where I just, uh, it was just a misty morning. This image has got just a, a classic California, California vibe to it, which I really like. And I just exposed for the sky, just silhouetting all the palm trees in the foreground. And I really like this kind of string of lights right here as well. And without that, if this image wasn't a silhouette, it'd be a pretty boring photograph. But, and if, if you're not familiar with how to shoot or how to create a silhouette, you basically just expose for the sky. So just put your camera in manual mode, make sure your subject is in front of a very bright light source, ideally the sky, and just increase your shutter speed until the sky is properly exposed for. And then whatever your subject is in front of it will more than likely be silhouetted. That's the easiest way to, to do it. But there are a lot of fun, fun to do, simple to do as well. Here's one from Tunnel View. You can see a Capitan on the left. You have Half Dome on the right. Just not a lot going on in the sky. There's a little bit of color coming up as the sun was rising right through here. And if this image was properly exposed everywhere, it'd be kind of boring, but with it being shot as a silhouette, it adds a little bit of a kind of mystery and drama to the overall photograph. And I really like the way this one works. Now, the third tip has to do with reflections. And typically in the summertime, there's usually a little bit more rain around. So, the, uh, so there's more opportunity to shoot lakes and puddles or ponds or things like that. And then definitely when I was in Yosemite, there was a lot of opportunities to do that. That area had received uh, a lot of snowfall this past winter and a lot of rain recently. So there was 
ponds and lakes in abundance all over the place, and I definitely took advantage of it. And what's interesting about reflections is you can definitely shoot them at any time of the year, but they're fantastic in the summertime because a lot of times you get those kind of boring, hazy skies. Well, I'll just show you. Here's one very boring, hazy sky. This is Yosemite Falls. And if I come up here to the develop module and bring my crop all the way down, see how much more interesting this photograph is now as opposed to this. So just using reflections. Now I know the reflection is just mirroring the boring sky in the background, but it just makes the image much more interesting with the reflection there. And what's cool about reflections is you don't always have to have the actual subject in the image, like right here. This is just my camera pointed down into the pond right here. And obviously the, uh, the, the subject is somewhere up here, but it just makes for an interesting photograph, adds a little bit of mystery. When you first look at the photograph, you're not 100% sure exactly what you're even looking at. So that's another kind of interesting thing you can do with reflections as well. And they're super simple to do. Usually a, a small aperture to create a lot of depth of field, pretty quick shutter speed. Sometimes you might have to bump up your ISO a little bit to create a proper exposure, which is fine. And I always focus on the actual reflection itself and on the main subject if the subjects in the photograph. That way I can pick which one I like. Sometimes I might focus stack them, but um, usually early, early in the morning, is a great time to find that nice still water. If the water you're shooting has got a couple ripples in it, you can just kind of draw the, the exposure out just a little bit, the shutter speed. You don't want to go too long though, because then you won't get that nice crisp reflection in the water. Now, the fourth tip has to do with long exposures. And I think a long exposure is fantastic when the light is very flat and the sky is boring. I find myself at the coast much more often in the summertime, and that's usually where I do the most of uh, my long exposure work. Here's one from Santa Barbara this past, uh, or a couple weeks ago. No light at all, very boring sky, just a very flat image. I put on my 10 stop ND filter. I think this is close to a 60 second exposure. It completely transformed this image. This image would be completely useless if it wasn't a long exposure, in my opinion, and this is actually one of my favorite images from the entire trip. I just love the simplicity of this photograph. Here's another one from the same area. Just once again, nothing going on, no light, but just put on an ND filter and go for a very long exposure. Just kind of transforms the entire scene. Now the fifth and final tip has to do with focusing on intimate details. And you don't need to have a macro lens for this. I love to do it with a long lens and I had a blast in Yosemite doing this with my uh, the, the 100 to 400 GM from Sony. Just zooming in to this, those distant subjects and it's just a fantastic way to create a, a very focused, intimate shot. And the best thing about it is a lot of times you can cut out the uh, the boring sky or you can cut out the, you know, kind of the hazy atmosphere created by the, the summertime. Here's one from the Mariposa Grove in Yosemite. Just zoomed all the way into 400 millimeters. It's got great color contrast between the green and the brown of the tree. You can really feel a lot of the texture here. And this was shot, at, I think, at like one in the afternoon, so very harsh light, but the, the canopy of the woodland area created a little bit of interesting light on one side of the tree, enough to make a, a, a decent photograph out of it. And here is one from, uh, whoops, where is it? From last week's video, whoops, it's right here where the, uh, I think it was Bridal Veil Falls. Yeah, here it is. And it just, the, the falling water against the, uh, the silhouette of the trees right here just creates for a very interesting photograph. And I have a couple images where the, with the entire waterfall in the shot. And it's just, it's, I mean, it's a cool photo, but I think this one is just a much more interesting because it's just a, a more intimate detailed shot. So that's something else that's, that's uh, good to play with. And here is one from Half Dome with a little bit of residual light from the setting sun just kissing the top and kind of highlighting that little patch of snow. But once again, there was nothing going on in the sky, not a lot of color. And if I were to zoom out and capture this entire scene, it just wouldn't be near as interesting as a, a more intimate, tight shot. So that's a great thing to focus on in the summertime as well. So those are the five things that I focus on the most during the summer. And I did this past trip to a California and Yosemite. And I really think it helped me to walk away with images that I'm very happy with in a season summer 
that I generally don't do a lot of photography in and I usually don't create a lot of uh, great photos in my opinion, but uh, these tips really helped me out and I was hoping they might be able to help you out as well. So hopefully you're able to get something out of this week's video. If you have any questions, as always, please leave them in the comments section below and I guarantee I will get back in touch with you. And if you enjoyed this week's video, if you could give it that thumbs up, it definitely helps the channel out and subscribe if you are not subscribed already. And as always, I really do appreciate you watching this week's video and I'll see you next week. Bye.